This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, continued, and then I will read chapter 20. And uh, Yeshua watched the man go. He walked away. He had too much in this world to lose. Too much wealth, too much stature, too many things to let go of. How could he follow Christ? And then Yeshua told his disciples, Do you have any idea how difficult it is for the rich people to enter God's kingdom? Let me tell you, it's easier to gallop a camel through a needle's eye than for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Why do you think that is? Why? Why is it so difficult for rich people to follow God? They have no need. They have no need. They have everything they, need, they want. Their money can buy them all the medical treatment they, they need. Why do they need God? Why would they need God? Maybe a transactional God. And then he said, the disciples were staggered. They said, then who has a chance at all? And Yeshua looked at them and said, no chance at all. If you think you can pull it off yourself, every chance in the world, if you trust God to do it. Peter chimed in. We left everything and followed you. What do we get out of it? Yeshua said, Yes, you have followed me. In the recreation of the world, when the Son of Man will rule gloriously, you who have followed me will also rule, starting with the twelve tribes of Israel. Not only you, but anyone who sacrifices home, family, fields, whatever, because of me, will get it all back a hundred times over, not to mention the considerable, considerable bonus of eternal life. This is the great reversal. Many of the first ending up last and the last ending up first. And then he continued, God's kingdom is like an estate manager who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. They agreed on a wage of a dollar a day, and went to work. Around nine o'clock, the managers, manager saw some other men hanging around the town unemployed. He went and told them to work in his vineyard. He would pay them a, pay them a fair wage, wage. They went. He did the same at noon. He saw more people hanging out unemployed. Went, brought them and said, come on, I'll pay you a fair wage. Three o'clock, went again, brought some people again. At five o'clock, he went back out, found some others still standing there. He said, why are you standing around all day doing nothing? And they looked at him and said, no one hired us. And he told them, go work in my vineyard. When the day was over, the owner of the vineyard instructed the foreman, call all the workers in and pay them their wages. Start with the last hired and then go to the first. Those hired at five o'clock came up and got the same salary, the same wage, as the guy who, was, who came in at 9 a.m., one dollar. Those who were hired first saw and assumed that they would get far more. But when, they came, when it came their turn, they realized they also got only one dollar. They were so angry with the manager. They said, these workers, these guys, came last to work. They worked for an hour and you gave them equal pay. We who have slaved here, scorching, scorched in the sun all day, you give us the same pay? And he replied to them, friend, I haven't been unfair. We agreed on a wage of a dollar, didn't we? So take it and go. I decide to give to the one who came last the same as you. Can I not do with my money what I want? Are you going to get stingy because I'm generous? Here it is again, the great reversal. Many of the first ending up last and the last first. How surprised will you be if Osama and Kasab 
and all the evil people in the world, whoever you call call evil and say have, have done terrible things, they end up first in line to enter into heaven. What would you say? Will you grasp? Do you realize it is the kingdom and the, 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 the ruler of the kingdom's generosity to give to all who come in what he wants? He promised you salvation freely. He promises them salvation even if they put their foot in the door just before it closes. The last will be first and the first last. But let's look at it according to the world standards. Okay, The guys who went to work at 9 a.m. worked all day. True. What were the guys who stood all day? They were standing. The, the owner of the, of the field was busy inside, came to the gate and saw them standing, called them in. They have waited all day, all day, wanting to work, but not getting any. They all need that one dollar to pay for food for their families for the next 24 hours. They all need the same thing, but they didn't find it till five in the, in the evening. If the owner had not come out at five in the evening, their families would have gone hungry for a day and they would have to wait out again in the hopes of finding work the next day. Suppose they hadn't found work for a week and their families hadn't eaten for a week and that night they died. Then what? Do not judge other people. Do not hold things against God. For we do not know every person's situation. We do not know what they're going through. Trust God. Trust Him. Trust Him to do right by you. And trust that He's doing right by others. Ah, and then Yeshua, now well on His way up to Jerusalem, took the twelve off to the side of the road and said, Listen to me carefully. We are on our way up to Jerusalem. When we get there, the Son of Man will be betrayed to the religious leaders and scholars. They will sentence him to death. They will hand him over to the Romans for mockery, torture and crucifixion. On the third day, he will be raised up to life. It was about this time that the mother of Zebedee came with her two sons, knelt before Yeshua with a request. What do you want? he asked. She said, give me your word that these two sons of mine will be awarded the highest place of honor in your kingdom. One to your right, one to your left. Mothers, mothers are so, they are so cute, yeah. They will unashamedly ask for anything for their children. And then Yeshua said, you have no idea what you are asking. And he said to James and John, are you capable of drinking the cup that I am about to drink? They said, sure, why not? And Yeshua said, come to think of it. You are going to drink from my cup. But as to awarding places of honor, that is not my business. My father will take care of that. When the ten others heard this, they lost their tempers, thoroughly disgusted with the two brothers. Yeshua got them together to settle things down. He said, you've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, how quickly a little power goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. Whoever wants to be great has to first be a servant. Whoever wants to be first has to first be your slave. That is what the Son of Man has come to do. He came to serve, not to be served to give away his life in exchange for many who are held hostage. As they were leaving Jericho, a huge crowd followed. Suddenly, 
they came upon two blind men sitting alongside the road. When they heard it was Yeshua passing, they cried out loudly, Master, have mercy on us. Mercy, son of David. The crowd tried to hush them up. But they got even louder crying, Master, mercy, mercy. Yeshua stopped and called them over. What do you want from me? And they said, Master, we want our eyes open. We want to see. Deeply moved, Yeshua touched their eyes. And they got their sight back that very instance, instant and they joined the procession. The greater your need, the greater your desperation, the louder you will cry out to God. The louder you cry out. <sighs> now we've got chapter 21, which is a long chapter, so I'm going to stop right here at chapter 20. Thank you, Lord Yeshua. Thank you for your word. Praise you. Give you all glory, all honor, all praise. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed, purposeful day.